He was 25 years old. He combed his hair like James Dean. He was fastidious. People who littered bothered him. She was 15. She took music lessons and could twirl a baton. She wasn't very popular at school. For a while, they lived together in a treehouse. In 1959, she watched while he killed a lot of people. Hello, and welcome to Film Church Radio, the podcast that treats cinema as a religion. It's Sunday. I'm Lewis. And I'm Brandon. And we are here to talk about movies. Each week, Brandon and I alternate picking a film for us both to watch and discuss. Today, I picked the film, um, and that film is going to be 1973's Badlands, directed by Terrence Malick, starring Martin Sheen and Sissy Spacek. Yay! (laughs) Yeah, so another film from the 70s, Brandon. Yeah, that's right. I was like looking back, and I was like, we should just rename this show that 70s show. (laughs) Because every film that we've chosen so far has been from the 70s. But then I was also like, this is... This is good, though, because it gives us a bit of context. We can see what else was coming out around the same time. Not that I don't think we're going to do this again. If you pick a film from the 40s, I'm not going to pick three more for the weeks from the 40s as well. Yeah, yeah. But it, it, it's nice to see the you know how the landscape was at this period in time. You know? Yeah, definitely. I mean, yeah, there was a lot of... Uh, innovating film stuff going on in the 70s and yeah you know it's one of the most interesting decades of film to me because i mean you the Hayes code was finally gone and you know all the um like film evolved i think into what it is today in the 70s in my opinion because it yeah uh because like i said the Hayes code was gone which was the code that restricted um, from showing any, from showing a lot of stuff. Yeah. From showing anything, from showing a married couple in bed, you know, Mm -hmm. um, you know, they had to do two separate beds before things like that. Um, and then on top of that, you have, you know, the first, some of the first big blockbusters. I mean, psycho was a big blockbuster, which was 1960, but but like the summer movie kind of started in the seventies with like Jaws, yeah. you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, it kind of, it's a very interesting decade. There's lots of rich cinema history to dive yeah. into. We could just do seventies shows in this podcast and never have, uh, nothing to talk about, you know, uh, <laughs> yeah. but just keep going forever. Yeah. yeah but we're not going to do that. Probably. Yeah, we'll see what your pick is. I'm very excited. I was thinking about it earlier. I was like, if it's another 70s film, I'm going to be pretty impressed. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um, well, we'll we'll get to there. We'll get there at yes. the end of the show. Um, That's right. That cold open was from uh, some of the movie posters for Badlands uh, when the movie was coming out. I think the I think it's really kind of funny and interesting. It's like like, can you imagine that being on a poster today? What yeah, people I know. would say. <laughs> I know. Yeah, they would be like, "What? Cancelled." <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So he's supposed to be twenty-five in the movie. She's supposed to be fifteen. Uh, they're yeah. based on real life characters. We're gonna get into spoilers here, I think. Obviously. For sure. So, yeah. um, if you would like to. Uh, you know, we always suggest watching the film before listening to the show. Mm-hmm. Um, always a good idea. But basically, they're based off two real life serial killers, and yeah. uh, I believe they were actually she was fifteen and he, or yeah, she was fifteen and he was nineteen. Mm-hmm. But so I think she was fourteen. Okay, so she was yeah. Um, and from the little bits that I read about the actual people he actually like kind of kidnapped her. Yeah. So after I watched the, so I watched the film quite late last night and then, um, on the criterion Blu-ray, there's a, um, a special feature, which is like a 20 minute TV show from, I think it's 93. Yeah. 1993. Uh, the program called American justice, which was kind of like, <clears throat> it just told the story a little bit of them. Um, and like went through the trial and stuff like that. 
and it creeped me out. Really? <laughs> so I'd watch the film and I was like, oh, that was good. And then I was like, I want to watch this because I want to know what it's based on. And he was horrible. The actual guy um, that it's based on um, was just, oh my gosh, like, yeah, no. I, yeah, go ahead. No. I can imagine he was horrible. Like, it was, I don't know. It's like, I feel a little oversaturated with um, glorifying serial killers. Yeah. Which is basically what he was, you know? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I can imagine that the real life person was uh, was terrible because this obviously is like a, a romanticized. Yeah, for sure. Depiction of crime. I mean, and it's just it was one of those where you watch the film and then when I watch that documentary or not documentary, it's just like a TV show. But it was like, oh, God, like, why did they choose to make a film out of this? You know, because yeah. it, it is it is really horrible. Um, and the guy's name was Charles Starkweather, um, and then his girlfriend was Carol Ann um, Fugate. So they were the two people that this was based on. Um, and over, I think, 10 days, they killed 11 people, which is just insane, you yeah. know. Um, he he went to the chair for it, um, and then she got life imprisonment for um, assisting or abetting or whatever it is. Um, Surely this movie, though doesn't take place in 10 days does it i didn't even think about that because it feels I mean, very long yeah i mean the treehouse that must have taken months like, I'm, I'm not very, yeah exactly i'm not very handy <laughs> but i can't imagine that being erected in like a day yeah <laughs> you know <laughs> um yeah this movie is it's pretty short it's only an hour and a half long but it felt yeah. really long like it felt oh yeah to me it felt like it was three hours long Oh wow! <laughs> um, I don't know if that's a good. I don't think that's a good sign. <laughs> probably not. Um, yeah, I've been trying to decide. Kind of like I'm kind of on the fence with it because I, um, you know, I didn't hate the movie, but I no. think uh, it's coming a little late for me in my film viewing experiences because the film is clearly, it's clearly been uh, influential in in other cinema. And this yeah. has been this film has been around for fifty years, so it's had fifty years to influence other filmmakers. And you can tell when you watch the movie; it's like because it's been so influential. When you watch it, you're not seeing anything new. You know yeah. what I mean? It's like mm -hmm. basically, you can tell that a lot of filmmakers have watched this film and just ripped out the best pieces and put them in their films. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> so because of that, it was. It was hard for me to really enjoy it as something I had never seen before. You know what I mean? Because it's yeah. and and this film is also, you know, I mean it. It was 1973, so like there had already been uh, Bonnie and Clyde, which is yeah. probably six years before. Yeah, you know, this is almost a like it's the same kind of story. You know, guy mm -hmm. and girl go on crazy murder rage and um yeah so it was like i you know i think it's one of those films that i think will maybe grow on me over time but just on the first mm -hmm. viewing i was you know like i said i didn't hate it but i wasn't like wow that was amazing or anything you know yeah. it just kind of left me it kind of left me feeling like sissy spacek does throughout the whole movie where <laughs> Martin Sheen is just going around people killing people and he'll like, just like turn to her and she'll be like, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She's yeah. like indifferent to the whole experience. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, her voiceover is one of my favorite things because it's just so monotone and like factual. Yeah. It's like, I said this and then we did that and then he did this and he said this and yeah. I was like, I really like that just matter of fact way of presenting this information. It doesn't really, it didn't waste any time, you know, skirting around any like, Oh, is she actually in love with him? Is she not? Is this too much? It's just like, she's like from about 40 minutes in like, yeah, I don't really like this guy anymore. I'm not in love with him. This yeah. story is kind of like, this thing isn't for me. I'm daydreaming about the future. You know? Yeah. 
So, um, before we like really get into it, I want to kind of say why I chose it. Okay. Um, I always like to know how people kind of discover films. Um, so for me, I'm, I'm a massive fan of Truman Capote's In Cold Blood, the book. Um, and I watched the film, which is also on Criterion, In Cold Blood. Yeah. And then you go down the rabbit hole of like the best films based on true crimes, you know, because um, that is part of it. And Badlands always just showed up. Um, so it's, you know, it's kind of in the same vein as that. And I saw a lot of similarities between the two. In Cold Blood's a little bit more... Um, stiff up a lip kind of it's a bit more you know um, prestigious in a way I guess yeah um, but that's how I kind of came across it and I really wanted to like see it so yeah. I chose it for us to watch um, not really thinking that it. again it's another 70s film but yeah. <laughs> um, you know I'm really glad that I did choose it I'm glad that we watched it yeah I mean it's one of those films I think I mean well Terrence Malick is you know legendary uh yeah. and you know he's always talked about in film circles and stuff but i've never seen a, one of his films until now you me know? neither yeah so you know I, I would like to you know now start watching all of his films i don't know man it's like i i guess maybe i just expected more or something i don't know but yeah i mean what do you think so i mean i thought that there was certain shots in there that were just beautiful they, yeah. like it looked there were certain parts that looked like oil paintings yeah and you could tell that it was like that they caught it just right because they they hold it for a second there's like when her father's doing the the billboard painting and like um he leaves and it kind of keeps on it for a second that's really beautiful and then there's so many sunsets you know the scene with him with the rifle across his across his shoulders is really famous as well yeah. Um it looks incredible. Um I thought that it's just it's lacking the and I I don't want to say it as like you know, I'm a seasoned professional or whatever, but it's just lacking those dramatic touches for me. There were certain times where I was like, Okay, we could have like, you know, tightened this a little bit. It could have been a little bit more tense. Things just like just like the voiceover, it was very matter of fact, things just happened. You know, he like towards the end again. We're going to get into spoilers, but towards the end, when he's trying to run away from the police, and it's like he just stops, and that's kind of like how he gets, yeah, you know, picked up and stuff. There was a lot of times that I was like, we didn't get the dramatic payoff that we were building towards. Yeah, there's like tons you know? of moments that could have been like very tense, kind of dramatic moments, but instead everything yeah. is just downplayed, which is an interesting choice. I mean. I think that was part of the reason maybe I didn't enjoy it so much is because I've been oversaturated with, you know, drama and tense moments and, you know, in films yeah. and to see something that's, that downplays those moments feels counter productive, I guess, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Um, so, you know, but it's, I mean, as a film lover, it's good to challenge yourself, you know. It's good to watch films that maybe you wouldn't normally watch and that challenge your viewing experience because it expands your palette and expands yeah. your, expands what you think about film. And I think I'm still, like, processing it, so it, it's not it, – it's hard for me to really uh, interpret it so far i think that this film is probably more enjoyable on the big screen because mm -hmm. even though it's mostly like a small intimate story it paints this portrait of america that should be viewed in a gallery and not like yeah in your home you know um, yeah yeah because there's there's probably lots of things that i mean like you're talking about all the beautiful shots and stuff i'm sure Watching it on a big screen just paints it in a, a different picture. Yeah, yeah, I was thinking about that a lot. World. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, there's just so much that that has already been taken from this film and put in other films. Oh, another mm -hmm. film that came out a few years later was Sugarland Express, which is also you know Steven Spielberg's first film, 
you yeah. know, and boy and girl go on the run from the police. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there was just a lot of, uh, I mean, there's like the iconic shot from Ap- Apocalypse Now, which I know you haven't seen yet, right? Uh, the iconic shot from Apocalypse Now, which is on the new poster, yeah. where Martin Sheen is like coming out of the mm-hmm. river. Yeah. Was taken from this movie. <laughs> I mean, like, like the shot where, I mean, I I assume just because it's yeah. like it looks like a shot for shot, but where he's like hiding from, um, you know, when they're in their the forest treehouse, mm-hmm. and he like hides in the leaves. And then he like peeks his head up. It yeah. looks like the same shot to me. Okay, cool. Um, so I'm like, I mean, it's got to be. It's, I mean, I, I would imagine yeah. that Francis Coppola was, you know, pulled it from that movie. Mm. I'm, I don't know. It, it just looks the same. Um, yeah. And it was Martin Sheen again, you know. Yeah. And it was only a few years later. So. Yeah, I mean, Martin Sheen in this film is just. Like when they say he looks like James Dean, I was like, he does look like James Dean. Yeah. You know, there was a lot of times that I felt like the narration kind of was listening to my inner monologue. There was a lot of times that I was like, oh, you know, this looks like this. And then she would say, you know, oh, we thought that this was this or whatever. Yeah. That wasn't a very good example, but that was one of them where he was kind of after he um, left his job right at the beginning and then he's walking to our house. I was like, he does have a like the look of James Dean. And then the, she was like, oh, he looks just like James Dean. <laughs> um, so they got that bang on. I mean, I, I totally bought that this 15 year old would run away with him. Yeah. Like this handsome kind of older in control guy, you know? Yeah. Which was good. Um, the one thing I really like that I haven't seen from other films in this kind of genre, I guess, is the fact that she's never really in love with him. It's just like an infatuation for a while and then it dies away pretty quick. Yeah. She's like, I'm kind of, I mean, there was one line that I really liked that made me laugh. Um, when they're in the forest and she was like, he said that I was just here for the ride. Um, sometimes I wish that he would fall in the river and drown so I could watch, you know, just that very <laughs> like, <laughs> but then there was other times that we got on really well. And I was yeah. like, yeah, that is like a 14 year old, you know, not really understanding what love is and yeah. what you know relationships are and just thinking this is just you know this is a bit of fun kind of thing right i i did watch a little bit of behind the scenes stuff on it and i do like appreciate the way that terrence malick kind of approaches the filmmaking in this and i'm curious i mean i assume that maybe like he does all of his films like this but um like this film feels more like a novel you know mm-hmm. than a film yeah or, you know, in, in like the way that only a, a movie can do, I guess. Yeah. Um, but he, like, it sounds like he kind of adapted to whatever was going on in the moment, you know, took mm-hmm. advantage of every location and every scene and the environment and tried to bring it into the film to kind of create something authentic. Yeah. Which is cool, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the, the set pieces are like great and the locations they use are all lived in and they don't look, you know, all the houses they go into, it's, you can tell it's a real house, you know, it's not a set, it's not kind of over analyzed. Um, it's just, it's a, it's a great portrayal of kind of America in a way, you know, yeah. just the vast openness of it, but the, the, you can't really escape, which is America, right? It's just, that's kind of, the, <laughs> the picture is trying. Yeah. Like, you know, they keep trying to go to the mountains and you can see them in the background, but they never really get there. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, but I mean, there was certain parts in it that did really kind of, it was like nails on a chalkboard for me. Yeah. Um, when he shoots her father at the beginning and her act, like city space is acting at that point. Like when she kind of bends down and she's like, daddy, it's Holly. Are you going to be okay? I was like, (laughs) this is terrible. Yeah. I was wondering, like, you know, I had this thought after the movie was over. I was like, is this supposed to be a satire? 
Like, is this yeah. supposed to be the film that's like making fun of uh, Bonnie and Clyde? Mm. You know, I mean, p- potentially. Yeah. yeah, I think it's kind of like showing them, you know, showing the real life version of what would happen in that situation. In a way, you know, just the infatuation won't last long. It's exciting and stuff, but it's not going to be the basis of a happy relationship. You know? Yeah, yeah. Because, like, in a normal movie, it's like he would have shot him, and then they would have been like, we got to get out of here, and then jump in the car yeah. and drive off, you know? But instead, yeah. they just stand around, and they're like, crap. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, the most horrific thing is he just like drags the body to the basement and he's like, okay, I'm going to head out for a little bit. You stay here, I'll be right back. I was like, that is awful. Yeah. Leaving her alone in the house with her dead dad body in the like basement is just, oh my gosh. Yeah. Um, that's when I, I mean, not that I was rooting for him, but that's kind of the, oh, he's not a, you know, he's not doing this for any other reason than self yeah, he like wanted wanted, to kill yeah. him. Like yeah. he he has some kind of sad satisfaction with killing people. Yeah. Um Yeah, it's the Well, the, you've seen True Romance, right? So, um like it's it's like True Romance was obviously very influenced by this movie. It's also, you know, boy and girl go on the run. Um and then the opening song is uh, the same song or the same. It's adapted from the same song. Hans Zimmer, I think, did the one in True Romance. I think you just got a lot quieter. Or did you mute it? I did mute it for a second. I was just taking some, like, having a cough. <laughs> oh, okay. No worries. Because um, I could still hear you a little bit, so I was worried that there was something oh. wrong with the mic. But I can hear you better Is it now. better now? Yeah. Okay, good. Okay. Okay. Um, but um yeah it's like true romance like i like that movie a lot and it is a very tense you know um kind of action adventure you know what i mean yeah and this badlands could have been that but instead it was um you know they just downplay everything so it's it's weird <laughs> you know, I don't know how else to describe it. Um But yeah, I don't know I don't know that I'll really like if this if this film is showing on the big screen. Yeah. You know, I would go and watch it cuz I I'm curious what a second viewing or third viewing is like on a big screen. Um, yeah. But yeah, I don't know. I don't think I, I don't, I think I had a bit of a different reaction to it than you. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I thought it was, there was some things that, you know, I didn't really enjoy. I mean, but that's the same with quite a lot of stuff. I thought, I didn't think that it, I thought that it was it by, honestly. I like, we yeah. got to the end and I was like, oh, wow, you know, he's already kind of caught and stuff. So, yeah, I mean, what made it feel long, do you think, to you? I think just because, um, you know, some of those moments just would drag out. It's like, because yeah. I was kind of one step ahead of the story, I guess. It was like, mm-hmm. okay, he he kills the dad. Now they're going to run away okay. together. But then like yeah. 15 minutes later, what, still, what, what yeah. felt like 15 minutes later, probably wasn't 15 minutes later, but, you know, mm-hmm. uh, they're still around. Yeah, they're still like, yeah, we're going to get out of here. Um, yeah. Did you look up the story, like the true story before you watched it? No, I didn't. No. Okay, good. No, and I didn't know it was based on a true story until until after. So Okay. Yeah. Um Yeah, I don't know. I think I'm just so oversaturated with this kind of you know, runaway action adventure story mm-hmm. that you know, like I said, it's um like I can tell that the film has influenced a lot of things, but you know, yeah. it's like I've yeah. already seen all the other things that it influenced so that by the time I get to it, it there's nothing necessarily new yeah. other than the way that it tells it, I guess, you know, mm-hmm. by by downplaying everything. Yeah. And I think that some of the some of the imagery on it was very um, easy to spot. Like it really kind of 
hit home some of the like dramatic themes in it. You know, the first time we meet the characters, there's that symmetry between them and dogs that they're interacting with. Like she's on the bed, kind of like playing with a dog. He finds a dead dog. <laughs> yeah, and like like tells the other person, you know, oh, you could eat it or whatever. Um, he literally crosses from the bad side of town to the good side of town when he meets her, you know, from the right. other side of the tracks. Um, her, like, descent into this crazy world is the death of her dog, so, like, the loss of innocence or whatever. Like, there's so many times in it, I'm like, this could have been just a little bit less hitting us over the head with it, you know? Yeah. Um well, see, I but didn't again, even it's... notice any of those things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is like, for you, it hits you over the head. For me, I'm like, yeah. oh, interesting. I didn't realize that. Might need to go back and rewatch it. Uh-huh. Yeah. I mean, like, the, the first interaction they have, she's literally like, oh, my dad wouldn't like that you're a trash man. Like, you're trash. Yeah. And I was like, okay. <laughs> yeah, we know. <laughs> like, he's probably not the best person for you. <laughs> um Yeah. Yeah, which is interesting. It's like, like, which comes back to like the, the idea of like, is this a satire? Is this like yeah. trying to be like, you know, trying to hit you over the head with it? Trying to yeah, potentially to, to be like, you know, here's here's the real version of these like criminal stories that you romanticize. It's not very romantic. It's kind of awkward. Yeah. You know? Yeah. There's also parts of it though that I think are really nuanced and not very <clears throat> you kind of blink and you'll miss it. Like when they take the kids into the cellar, um, and he kind of like shoots those two shots into the cellar and they run back towards the house. He like holds his hand out for her and she like ignores it and he quickly like pulls it back. Which is just I think was really well done. That was one of the scenes that I'm like, oh that's that's really, you know nicely kind of portrayed we didn't need the voiceover of i was starting to kind of fall out of love with him or whatever because we'd already kind of seen it right you know yeah um and then the voiceover does come and i was like okay you know yeah yeah and the voiceover is like like you said it's really good um but yeah, it's just like it's not like to me it wasn't anything new, but like at the time I'm sure it was like very innovative. Yeah. You know. Mm-hmm. Um <laughs> Yeah. Sorry, I'm like having a hard time like thinking of other things to say about this movie because it's like uh Yeah, it wasn't Well Let's wasn't, talk about the fact that he does look like James Dean and like the whole way through he kind of wants to be famous because of it. Yeah. Like he like when he's kind of I think it's when he's driving away or she's or they kind of get into the end where they're about to split up. Um and I think she says something on the lines of like like he wants a girl to scream his name when he dies. Like he wants someone to kind of like the very melodramatic kind of reaction to it all. Yeah. Um and the fact that they do mention James Dean so much you know, in relation to him, got me thinking about kind of its relation to violence on screen. You know, do you think this is a comment on <clears throat> the American new wave and kind of what they were seeing on the screens in terms of being a lot more liberal, a lot more stuff being allowed to be viewed? Yeah, I mean, I and, guess so. I think it's, um, yeah, like it's coming at a time where there is a lot more violence on screen. It's hard yeah. to know whether or not, you know, I don't know. It's weird what sometimes with film, I it's hard for me to tell if um, people are just capitalizing on something or if they've really got something to say. Yeah. No, you know no, what no. I mean? Yeah. Um, and I think in this case, like he does. Um, but, but it's for me it's taking a lot longer to process it i guess it's taking a lot mm-hmm. longer for me to you know i'm not immediately recognizing what those themes are necessarily i guess um, yeah i mean i think that it does like because it's downplaying playing things um it is trying to be less romantic about yeah violence and kind of show mm-hmm. you more of what uh the reality of it But at the same time, it's like it doesn't go all the way with it. 
You know, it's no. not really showing you the horrific. Because, like, at the end of the movie, you know, all even all the cops are just like, hey, you want to come talk to your girlfriend, you know? Yeah. Like, they're being like, his right. pal, you know? Yeah, it's, well, it's like an interview, isn't it? But, like, when he's standing on the wing of the plane, and they're all like, what kind of music do you like, you know? And he's, like, throwing his lighter out and his comb, and it's like he, yeah. he's, made, he's become that celebrity that he wanted to be. Yeah. You know, it doesn't really matter about her anymore, you know? He's yeah. kind of reached the status that he wanted to be at. Yeah. Yeah, it's, you know, I mean, it's a quick way to fame, I guess, if you want yeah. to be famous yeah, I mean, for something. But Yeah, it's not... I mean, image is everything, isn't it? it just, it's yeah. how he's going to be remembered. You know, when he, he's being chased by the police, he looks in the mirror to see them, and then he kind of, like, looks at himself and, like, changes his position, his posture and stuff to make himself look cool doing it. Yeah, that was kind of interesting, too. Yeah, that was, like... Yeah, one of those moments where, you know, I, like when the, yeah, that last chase scene was the, kind of the first moment where I was like, okay, now we're getting to like a big dramatic climax. Like now, like yeah. this, the the moments of um, tension and excitement that I've been waiting for, like here's the moment. Yeah. And then the next thing you know, he's just like looking in the mirror, mm-hmm. <laughs> checking mm-hmm. his hair. Yeah. And, and so it's like, yeah, it just, it, it uh it takes those moments and then instead of giving them to you it just it's like no this it's is not, not about that yeah. yeah yeah which is interesting it's like like i said it's like i think because you know film is so rich now with like so many diverse things to watch um And we're like oversaturated. Like I keep going back to that. I think I'm just oversaturated with great cinematic moments um, that 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 kind of bring me to tears or bring me to, you know, tension or you know being scared or you know those kind of things. In this film, it'll almost take you there, but then be like, nah. Yeah. Um, Which I think I don't. I mean, it's I don't think it's a bad thing. You know, I'm just trying to decide what I think because I guess it is something new like I you know I thought this was a film that was like um nothing I had not ever seen before but yeah. you know it kind of is and in, in that way where it is um it's not satisfying those emotional things that I want out of a film and so it's yeah. like it's making me question okay well this is something new from a film, is this something that I do want out of a film? I don't know. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I think yeah, I'm that's still interesting. To decide. Yeah. Um, I mean, I guess that's it, it. That might just be the point. I mean, it might just be trying to kind of, you know, change these perceptions. You know, because if you if you think about like it built into this dramatic climax and like the car chase and stuff, it's very old Hollywood. It's like this guy is going to get his just desserts by the hands of the police for all the crimes that he's committed. You know, she'll probably be sent to jail as well. All that kind of stuff. And instead it's like, it's not, it's not about that. We've kind of seen that before. It's actually about like this other thing, which is his kind of quest for immortality and like being, being somebody, you know, yeah. being a, like a, a name that people know. Um, it's not about love. You know, you, you think everything describes it as like, like a story about two people that run away together and they murder a lot of people. And then again, it's like, it's not about that. It's not, it's yeah. about like youth and an experience and not really understanding, um, like the person in front of you or what's happening because you're just so caught up in it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that I'm kind a- of like, it, it's kind of about misinterpretation maybe Yeah. because it's yeah. like, you know, I, you know, I like, we're all going into the film you know, with these preconceived ideas of what, you know, a lover story mm-hmm. about two kids running away together and committing crime entails. And yeah. then, um, you know, it, it downplays all those, it, it subverts your expectation. It downplays all those moments to where you question what the film is about and stuff. And, um, 
And then, like you said, it's about two kids that are misinterpreting what fame is, what love is, yeah. yeah, what violence is, all those things. Yeah, yeah, um, and that's why I liked it. I think that's you know it is it is a twist on something that I've seen a million times, which I enjoyed. You know, it wasn't satisfying in that way. Um, but it was satisfying in other ways, yeah. you know? Um, and I think that the touches of comedy were really good in there as well. Like I said, the, the line about him drowning in the water and her watching, I love the shot of when they're kind of building the tree house. Um, and he's like running through the forest, but he does it in like such a like upright way with his rifle, um, which I find really funny. And just the booby traps that he'd set, <laughs> yeah. like the swinging ball with the spikes. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was very like. I was uh, disappointed we didn't get to see that happen. Yeah, it was very Return of the Jedi for me. Yeah, it was you like know, the and, last guy that was running away. I was like, all right, now he's going to cut the ball with the spikes. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, um, but there was yeah, there was a lot of comedy in it. I enjoyed. I mean, I really liked when after he killed the father and he left her in the house with the body and stuff. And he went to the voiceograph and he was recording himself, like basically confessing and saying that they were going to kill each other for themselves. Um, and the, the box was like voiceograph. It's private, like your private kind of recording studio or whatever. And there's just like the massive hole in the glass. So it's like anyone could, who walked by could have heard that <laughs> those little touches I really liked as well. Yeah. Um, just how we, you know, it was supposed to be really important, but then anybody could have walked by and heard him talking about it. Yeah, um, yeah there was a lot in this that I really enjoyed, for sure. Um, and I love the song Love is Strange um, by Mickey Baker, which is when they're kind of at the treehouse and they're like dancing around together. Yeah. Um, the sound, so the soundtrack got me as well. I thought that was good. Yeah, definitely. Um... Yeah. There is a lot of interesting uh, trivia in this movie. Uh, mm -hmm. Charlie Sheen and Emilio Estevez are in it. They're, um, I think it's their first ever cameo. They're just kids, but they're just uncredited. Um, oh, cool. Uh, playing under a lamppost. I don't remember which scene that is, but... Um, yeah, I think it's... Is it pretty early? Is it at the rich man's house, maybe? Maybe. Yeah. Uh, and Terrence Malick is also in the movie. I don't know if you caught him. Yeah. Yeah, he's the, the salesman, right? Or the yeah. architect or the, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. The guy that comes to the door. Yeah. Um, I thought it was interesting that um, he... Well, he kind of had to do it because they didn't have anybody else to do it. And then he wanted yeah. to go reshoot it with someone else. And Martin Sheen was like, no. Yeah, <laughs> which I think is great. Because um, I was I was also reading that that's his only kind of one of his only known like recorded voice like ever kind of thing. He doesn't do interviews. He's not. Oh really? He's a bit of a recluse, and that's one of the only times that you get to like see and hear him. You know, speak. I guess that's pretty interesting. Yeah, I don't know a ton about him other than. He's like, yeah, he's just kind of mysterious. Yeah, he does. I mean, he went like 20 years between his next film and then his third film, I think. Wow. So, you know, there's a lot of, he doesn't kind of make films. He's not very prolific, but he puts out really good stuff. Um, yeah, he doesn't like interview, talk about it, anything like that. That is Not crazy. wildly accessible, you know. Um, which in this day and age I find incredible. Yeah, for sure. You know, especially when you put it in relation to this film, which is kind of all about celebrity and being known for the wrong thing, you know. Maybe that's part of it. Maybe he just wants the word to speak for itself. Yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, and it is, this is his first film. Yeah. And it's crazy how influential it's been. Um, for yeah. a first film and how I know that we said there's a lot of stuff in it that's kind of like hitting you over the head but how assured it is 
there's it's yeah. There's not a lot of wasted time, I don't think. I know that you said that you thought it dragged a little bit, but I didn't yeah. feel there was anything that could have been caught. You know, yeah. maybe the script could have been a little bit better, but I don't feel like the film missed anything. Yeah, I mean, like I said, like I, I don't know. I mean, I don't know what the script was like, but it seemed like they adapted a lot. Like they, you know, mm-hmm. the script was kind of just like to give them to know what you know who the characters were and some of the yeah. lines and where they were going with it. But then, um, you know, they did a lot of improv, a lot of just like trying to be in the moment and in the environment and use what was around them um, to discover yeah. the scene. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, which is an interesting way to, to do it. Like, I don't think he does a lot of storyboards or anything like that, you know? Mm. Um, doesn't like to over plan. Yeah. I know that in terms of like, he likes to shoot everything like you're looking out of a window. He doesn't like to tamper too much with the colors or the sign of saturation in anything. Yeah. Um, which if that is true, I mean, the images they got for this film are just incredible. There's a lot of stuff that was like, that's been, like heightened the colors in here are just so vivid you know every blue is like the bluest you've ever seen every yeah. blade of grass is the greenest you've ever seen you know there's not there's no kind of like bland you know beiges or whites so much it's all this these really vibrant prime colors you know well apparently it was um the art director had to start taping leaves to trees and painting them green because they there was a noticeable shift in the seasons change because they shot over like 16 weeks. Oh, well that explains part of it, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Which I think that guy, I think that's, uh, Sissy Spacek's husband. I think they got married. Oh, right. Our director and, and her. Oh, wow. Um, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So Sissy Spacek, like started her film career the year before, so 1972. Carrie is still like three years away at this point. Yeah, so she hasn't kind of made her name, and I, I honestly think that she kind of she lets it down a little bit. I don't feel like I feel like Martin Sheen is excellent and yeah. like totally believable. You can tell that he's kind of a bit more seasoned. I guess yeah. he knows how to play, you know, play it really well. Um, like there's just certain parts of it that I was like, Oh dear, you know, and with her acting especially. Yeah. Which was a shame. Yeah. yeah. Um Yeah, I didn't think she was bad or anything. There was nothing that really stood out, but she didn't have I mean, that was the character too. Like she didn't have yeah. uh you know, she didn't have any like big emotional moments. Like she kind of the whole thing, yeah. she was just kind of um uh, indifferent to everything. Like even like yeah. the sex scene is like that was a really funny one. <laughs> like, yeah, she just appeared out of the tree. Like <laughs> I had to rewind and watch it because because when he gets his jacket off the branch, she's not there, and then he walks a little bit, <clears throat> and the camera like shifts back and she is there. Yeah. So it's very kind of like she just emerges from the tree trunk, which I enjoyed a lot. I was like, wait a minute, where did she come from? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I think that's just you know part of. Like I think she did a good job of being the character, you know what yeah. I mean, which was not yeah. su- which was not supposed to. It it wasn't really it wasn't like the role that was supposed to make her. No, Oscar worthy or anything like that, you know. Whereas yeah. like Martin Sheen, um, I watched a little interview with him. He was like, you know, when I when I read the script, he loved it, you know, but he. Mm-hmm. Um, thought he was too old for the role and then Terrence Malick was like well I'm going to make him a little bit older so that you can play him because I think you're the the guy that should play him and he yeah you know he thought it was the role of a lifetime and apparently he still thinks it's like his best or the best film that he's ever been in wow so wow yeah I mean he is the character that you come away remembering like all the bits that I remember you know they're sticking in my mind uh, uh, either things he said or the way he looked kind of thing. I think it's going to be one of those films that in 10 years time, when I get off the shelf again, I'm like, Oh yeah, this is SpaceX in this, you know, as opposed to like, I'm going to watch that because of the performance that she gave kind of thing. Right. Um, but yeah, he's, he's amazing. 
like really, really good. Yeah. Um, and he, I mean, he says a lot that you don't really need any other kind of supporting characters. They kind of carry it themselves, especially him. You know, when he's on screen, you don't really need anyone else on screen. Yeah. Because everything that he does looks so iconic. Yeah. I did really like the scenes where um, he's in the rich guy's house and he's just mm-hmm. like sitting by himself and talking. Yeah. Yeah. I liked, I liked all that stuff. Um, yeah. Because it really was well, interesting for one thing because he's like just in a room by himself. I'm like, where are the other characters? Like he's, he's the one with the gun. Like how, like how is this older gentleman not like escaped already? Mm -hmm. Um, but it just gives you time to kind of just sit with him and his thoughts and stuff. And, um, I don't have the quote, but there was one quote in there that I thought was really interesting where he's talking about, uh, the majority of opinion or something. You know what I'm talking about? Um, yeah. I thought that line was interesting. Because um, at first he's, he's talking a lot about like school and kind of like the police and stuff, I think, like authority in general. And it's like a it's like a really bad stand-up. He's like, oh, they get it right sometimes, you know. <laughs> um, and I was like, is he talking to like a younger brother? Like, is this kind of wisdom that he's passing down? And it's just he's just speaking to no one, really. Like, he thinks that this is going to be some kind of you know, groundbreaking, you know, um, message that he's got to send to everyone. Yeah. Um, again, it's just, you know, looking for that fame, that infamy. Yeah. So. Um, so in 1973, yeah. uh, both Martin Scorsese's Mean Streets and uh, Badlands yeah. debuted at the New York well. Film Festival. And wow. Warner Brothers picked up both. Wow. I mean, so, Warner Brothers did pretty well. <laughs> yeah, like, that's like both of their... I guess it's not Martin Scorsese's first, first film, but it's his first, like, in yeah. color yeah, kind of thing. And uh, I think there's a good comparison to make. Cause you watch Mean Streets and you're like, of course, this is Scorsese. This is like, you know, this kind of ceilings for everything that's going to come in the future. You know, Goodfellas and stuff like that. It's very... Yeah. Um, I don't know foreshadowing of all that kind of stuff. I guess where I guess this is the same. It's kind of you can see that it's someone that's very confident in what they're wanting to put on screen and doing it in their way. You know, yeah. not really kind of um, using you know bowing down to anybody else or doing anything that, against their wishes. It's very individual. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I'm excited to see his other films. I mean, maybe. Um, maybe we could watch a lot of them on the show since he hasn't done yeah. a ton of films. Yeah, I mean, I mean, all of them are kind of film. I mean, especially the earlier ones are films that I've definitely heard about. You know, so they must be pretty well regarded. I mean, Thin Red Line. Um, I think Tree of Life. I know that when that came out, that was like, a lot of people were talking about that. Yeah, you know, I do remember that. Um, yeah, so. And it's, I mean, to say that we've never seen a film like, I know of Terrence Mallon. You know, I know that he is a film director. Right. So there must be, you know, a lot of good out there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. And just watching this, like you see how much he's influenced mm-hmm. all, all these other things that you've already seen. Yeah. You know? yeah. Um, so, yeah, uh, I'm curious as what, you know, what his later films look like yeah for know, sure if they're and did he do was it days of heaven as well yeah he did do that as well yeah well oh. yeah i've heard of that in richard gear so yeah it's, i mean i'm glad that we watched it for sure because it would have just i don't think i would have kind of got round to it do you know what i mean it's not one because i haven't really seen much that he's done before and it's not like a <clears throat> something that i would rush to go and see so i'm glad that we we did it finally yeah i mean it's always a commitment when like you've you've heard a lot about a director and you've never seen any of their films to be like okay now i'm starting you know because once you start blow me away yeah Yeah. (laughs) it's like (laughs) yeah you're just going down the rabbit hole and then now we've got to watch everything yeah um (laughs) poor us 
but yeah, good choice. Yeah. And yeah, I think, you know, you. it's like about halfway through this podcast, I was like, I don't know if I've got anything else to say about this movie. Yeah. But I'm glad that we kept, you know, pushing through because, yeah, I think I've, I now have better ideas of what it is, you know? Yeah. Cause a yeah, lot of times you just watch film and you don't really process it. You don't really try to critically analyze it or think about it. And you just go on, you're like, all right, what am I going to watch next? Yeah. You know? And then it can kind of just get forgotten in your mind. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this is, I love that this podcast is, helping us evolve yeah you know yeah for sure i mean you know this is what it's all about right it's just sitting down and kind of talking about a film that would have been exactly that we would have watched it been like ah on to the next one you know so it's nice to kind of sit down and take a minute to kind of appreciate these movies because everything that's coming out is so thick and fast everything is so yeah. readily available that sit down and spend an hour talking about a film that we would have ejected from the blu-ray player put on the shelf and then kind of left it is is really good yeah definitely yeah speaking of films that we're going to be <laughs> putting <laughs> in the dvd player brandon um, i am so excited because i feel like okay so behind the curtain a little bit we started recording these like summer 2021 yeah um it's now early 2022 i picked badlands to watch like six months ago. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then like other things happened and we've recorded other stuff. And this is the, so we have <laughs> Badlands. I feel like Badlands is going to become a running joke. It's going to be one of those things that it's a film that we both want to watch, but we don't get around to it. You know, so it's yeah. going to be our, like, it's, it's going to be our Badlands. Um, so I'm super excited to not be texting each other. Like, have you watched Badlands yet? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, we did it. So the next film um, that we're going to be watching next week and talking about, yes. guess what decade it's in? Is it the 70s? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is a film that uh, a few people have told me to watch recently. Yeah. Um, that... I care about a lot. I care about their opinions a lot. Um, yeah. But they're, they come from very different walks of life. Sweet. And like total opposite ends of like, at least the political spectrum. <laughs> yeah. So like yeah. for, for, for two people that uh, I feel like would never be, want to be in a room together to both suggest the same movie. I'm like, okay, this is, yeah. this might be interesting. Uh, 1979, Being There. Okay. It is uh, directed by Hal Ashby and stars Peter Sellers and Shirley MacLaine. And I believe it's his last performance. Oh, wow. Okay. So, get ready. Awesome. Good good pick. Yeah, not something that I probably would have... Picked off the shelf, you know, myself. I mean, yeah. Shirley MacLaine, I love Shirley MacLaine. I think she's wonderful. And Peter Sellers, I've kind of come very late to Peter Sellers, I feel like, in the last probably calendar year. Yeah, because <laughs> you, you, we watched um, Dr. Strangelove earlier yeah. this year, and yeah. that was the first thing you had seen him in, right? Yeah, and then I watched um, Battle of the Sexes, which is an English film that he was in. Um, which the gender politics, as you can probably tell from the title, are very, very outdated. So the whole yeah. time you kind of sit like the whole way through. Yeah. Um, but I mean, it's still like he's very funny and he's very, he's very good at what he does. And then he shows up in the Beatles documentary. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so maybe the universe is telling me, you know, like, hey, Peter Sellers is a guy that you got to be interested in. Yeah. So yeah, great pick, Brennan. I'm excited to watch that. Thanks. Yeah, me too. Um, it's been on my list for a bit. Sweet. So Awesome. Well, I think that brings us to the end of the show. Um, you can find the show on Twitter and Instagram at, at Film Church Radio. 
And you can follow us individually on Letterboxd. Brandon is at Selmanscope, S-E-L-M-A-N-S-C-O-P-E. And I'm at Walker Lewis 3007, W-A-L-K-E-R-L-E-W-I-S 3007. Um, to keep up with what we've been watching individually. Um, we are also um, on all good um, streaming and podcast platforms. So go on there, leave us a rating and a review. So you know if you like the film, if you didn't like the film, and what you would pick for us to watch in the future. Um, yeah. I think that's everything. All right. 12 noon, Grand Coulee Dam, New Year's Day, 1964. You meet us there. Meet us there. Bye, guys. Thank you. Bye.